G'day viewers, my name is Graham Stevenson and I'd like to invite you to come on a journey of creativity and learning and adventure through the series Colour in Your Life. There's an artist in every family throughout the world and lots of times there's an artist deep down inside all of us as well. So grab your kids, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, uncles and mums and dads and come and see how some of the best artists do what they do. Well, hi folks. Well, we are in Solano Beach in California and I'm with a very dear friend of mine, Peggy Stakes. Peggy, great to be with you again, Good honey. Good to be here, too. Fantastic to see you. A very, very interesting lady. She's basically been a great athlete most of your life, haven't you? Your whole family's a bit that way in many senses. So. Yes, they have. But uh, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be doing something that we've never done before and that's actually working with alcohol inks. Now, you know, with your athletic background and your sporting background, you're a brilliant golfer, but it was about 10 years ago that you ended up having to replace your, your shoulder. Yes. Shoulder cup yes. and had that taken out. And, and literally after that, you, f you found out you really wanted to do something else. Right. And obviously golf wasn't one of the options and you found out and you found alcohol inks. Uh, yeah, what's that been like for you? Well, Graham, you know that it actually started with my 30 years of being a photographer. Mm -hmm. And I think that when you're an artist, you know, it's hard to train somebody to see visually. You know, people either do or they don't. Mm -hmm. So I was able to transform my background in photography into the desire to try working with painting. So yeah. I started with uh, acrylics, but I found accidentally some fabulous, these alcohol inks, which are super challenging. Yeah. And there's never a dull moment because one never knows who's going to have control over what. But the colors are just amazing. They are. They're I mean, amazing. They really pop and they sort of tend to do some strange things. And we're obviously going to see that today where one ink will mix and then the other one will just be completely separated. Right. You get some amazing effects with it. So I'm going to step out of shot and we're going to see really what I think is just an amazing form of art. I think it's incredible. And I'm gonna let Peggy take over and we'll go from there. Okay, Peggy, to begin with, we have some special boards and special papers that you use for alcohol inks. So what are they for a start? Well, let me explain one thing before we get into the papers is that alcohol ink is completely different than many of your mediums. What it is, is the fact um, where you have your oils and you have your acrylics or watercolors, whatever you may have, they dry at different speeds. Um, alcohol ink, there's not a lot of time to play with it. it. It dries immediately. If I gave you one little layer of alcohol ink, within 30 seconds it will be dry. But if I layer them, then you have to use your own judgment when you think that, that it's proper to pick it up. Anytime you use alcohol inks, it needs to be a non-porous surface. One of the most popular is this Upo made by Legion. I recommend that you use a heavy duty because it, it will give you more substantial um, body to move your inks around. So with that being said, number one, alcohol inks are not very user, user friendly when it comes to cleanup. So I have my good old Mr. Clean bag box of gloves there and I don't hesitate using 20 pair in one, one piece of art because we don't want to smear one from the other. So. Let's start by putting the gloves on and then we'll pick our colors. And I, today, these are these happen to be some new ones that came out. They're pearl, but we're gonna go back to the basics. Um, I buy most of my uh, alcohol inks online, mainly because the cost is better and they're more available. It's not, um, it is not uh, readily available in many stores. So, art stores. So we're gonna start with some crimson, which is one of my favorites. It's a very, very um, deep, rich, rich, rich red. And you will see that as it moves, you will see as, as it moves, you are de deciding what the eventual outcome will be. Now, what you want to do, or what I do, is I try to move my, get my inks blended together 
so that they can start working and making their magic, which is amazing because it is a very, very fun way to, to paint, to create. And here you're gonna see right now, here's your magic. It's the moving, the venture, the different uh, shapes that you're creating as you speak. And as you let them move down, they obviously become more transparent. So if you also want to do this, this is very important. They use this, this is just your regular alcohol um, out of the drugstore, but they do have what they call a solution, blending solution. So what you do when you have this, it diffuses, as you will see, diffuses the ink. So now you're gonna have fun because now you've got the opportunity to be more fluid without it drying so fast. And you use um, Jacquard alcohol inks? Jacquard, uh, it's Tim Holtz basically is one of the ones that is probably the most popular. Uh -huh. um, but Pinata Jacquards are fabulous. I like their colors. They all have just a little bit different textures to them. I have to admit that when we talked about how dry alcohol ink, how quickly it dries, I'm not real pleased with this piece. So the nice thing about alcohol ink is we can put this one aside. I can always come back to it later and add more and probably end up with a masterpiece. So let's, yeah. take, another let's take another piece of our Yupo paper, the heavy duty. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the pearl. We're gonna try the pearl because it's something new on the market and I think it's something that you would be very excited to try. This one is called, well, this is Flamingo. This is your basic Flamingo. This is not purple, but we're gonna go with Flamingo. And what I'm gonna do is before I get too far into it, I'm gonna add the um, alcohol to get it blending before it gets too dry because that keeps it from drying so fast. You can see in the picture uh, caverns of colors, the electric luminosity that you can actually get through the work by doing this. It's really quite extraordinary. On top of being extraordinary, it is fun. That is the one thing about this particular type of art is that it's always a surprise. What's going to happen next? What's going to, what is going to come out of this? Now this one is making me much happier because it's, it's lighter, it's easier to flow. As you can see, the blending solution brings all of it out. When you get into more technical things where you have particular colors, like if you're commissioned to do something, obviously that limits your ability to, you know, play with different colors because you've been asked to, to do something for somebody's particular um, uh, color scheme. But here we have very muted colors. And I think the thing about alcohol inks is that they sort of paint their own pictures in the end. They do, they and do. They're, they're a bit like clouds. All of a sudden there's something there that wasn't there 10 minutes ago. As you can see, that's exactly what it's doing, Graham. Now, while I have this moving, I'm going to go and I'm going to use a darker color just to see. This is called Deception. How's that for a name? Again, we have a lot of blending solution on here, so it will move fast. And you will see the different textures forming. It'll almost try to sneak off the paper. So you have to keep it very, very, very carefully in tune. You can also, I say that you don't need a brush. You can use your fingers. If you don't like to see these little marks in here, you can use tools. Uh, there's sponges, there's paint brushes, there's all kinds of unique, creative ways of, of, of doing these. So um, we, need to, we need to just keep playing with them until you find something that you find is good for you. And yeah. that is all that is important in art because really there's no good or bad in art. I don't, I've never seen any, I've never judged anybody. I'm saying it's different, I might not understand it. And I think probably with abstract art, that will be the biggest case is somebody will walk up and say, well, I don't get it. And I'll say, well, you're really not supposed to get it. You're just supposed to kind of look at it and, and see what you see. And when I'm speaking of that, we're going to let this one kind of do its thing too because for some reason whether it's the heat it's bubbling more than normal some of the things that i love about it is particularly with the piece black and orange it looks like amber the actual stone amber that you can get that's out of tree sap and there's a real three-dimensional effect 
that's involved in the work as well. It, it's quite amazing. And that is where you can let things clump up, and and that's why I like to work with the the gingers and the darker the darker area. I don't I don't do a lot of pastels. Mm -hmm. I like the bright image that that you get from your your alcohol inks straight on. And sometimes this is going to be. To be very honest with you, I think with the weather today, this is going to be a multi-layered piece before it's finished. But what we'll do later is when we have the bigger bottles of ink, we can put a bigger piece out and show you what vers versatility you will have uh, trying to let it go. So we're going to let this one sit here for a second and see what magic it's going to perform. Um, one of the things that I was taught in one of my classes that is some of the basics that we don't think about is using Dawn. They call Blue Dawn. This looks a little green, but I think they've come out with an extra strength one for cleaning. Um, so that is a very, very important thing to have. Again, rubber gloves, cleaning solution, uh, having your Dawn ready. If it gets on your hands, you probably will have to use an alcohol-based so I'm going to take this right now and I'm going to let this dry and then we're going to come back later and we're going to add more to it and we're going to see what will evolve from this particular combination of colors. Well, we came back and I was take, uh, watching this dry, and I think because of the weather here in San Diego today, even though we have perfect weather, it is just not a good day for drying uh, alcohol ink. So we're gonna put this one aside and try a, a larger piece and give it a little bit more room to move, so. So what type of board are we actually using there, Peg? This is just a regular artist board. It's a heavy duty, which is nice because it, it gives you that flexibility that your UPO doesn't give. And you do have a number of different surfaces that you can use like linen, linen. and there's a, there's a metallic surface. Yes, I working. actually did want to mention that Graham because yeah. I get, I'm very big on recycling and I found a marvelous uh, framer down here. And what I do is I go down and of course he has pieces left over and what I do is he's generous enough to give them to me so I can bring them home and try different methods. Uh -huh. uh, some of them are linen, some of them have a, you know, a deeper texture to them. And of course, they're all different you know, colors. So as you see this dry, if you don't like this little dot in here before it dries, as you can see, it's drying rather rapidly. You can go in because you're going to throw these gloves away anyway. So here we go. As you can see, it's already dried. Now that's fast. That is fast. Yeah. That is very fast. So that is why we try to get our colors that we love in separate places and then we can use a little bit of the blending solution. And when we use a little bit, we, what we mean by that is that you can take the blending solution, which is right here, and you can probably take something very small Mm, let's try this, excuse me. And I will pour some on this so we're not directly putting it on the color. Uh -huh. And let's see how this works. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna rub it around, see what we get. And you can get some pretty dynamic effects and patterns with the techniques that you use, like the harvest moon through the forest yes. piece. I mean, because it's, you can see the forest and then the, then the moon. I mean, they're, they're obviously abstracts, so they sort of talk to you as you go along, basically. You're absolutely right, and that's what makes it so much fun. So you've got another piece here called Lava's Power, and you can actually see the, the effect of lava in there. So they sort of, they create their own pictures in the end, really, don't they? Yes, they do, and that's why, that's why I think this, this, uh, particular weather that we're having today, which is gorgeous, but sometimes the inks don't like it quite as much. They tend to to coagulate, is I guess a, wood, a, a good word for it. 
Now we have something going that really is exciting. We finally are getting our separations exactly the way we want them. We're going to go around and we're going to edge the white areas in so it'll pop the other colors out. So let's give it a go and everything is easier than you think but it takes experimentation. Now one of the exciting things Peggy about doing this is that you just don't know what you're going to get but all of a sudden I know. this is starting to come I together know. for you. So we will continue to bring these colors around to make them bold but slightly slightly just enough that they can blend into the existing pieces. You've got a piece here called Moons Away and you can obviously see that there's a moon in the picture it even looks like there's a fence in the country right. with other trees and it's an abstract but, but the interpretation of the person looking at it is that's what I see. That is one of the ones that did actually have intentional image. Well you've got the picture sand, sea and sky. Yeah you know that's the only one yeah. that has actually uh, mixed media that bottom part is cock oh, like okay. regular wall cock. Wow. Yeah. It's a pretty dynamic piece. If um, somebody wants to come and see you, what is your website address? My website is really simple. It's PeggyStokesGallery.com. Go in there and have a look at Peggy's work. It really is illuminating. One of the things that I think that we haven't delved on today, which I wanted to because it's a big philosophy of mine, is the fact that when I talk to somebody about, would you like to come over and paint with me? They'll say, oh, I can't paint. I, I, have, no, I have no ability whatsoever. Well, that's not true because you haven't tried it. Now, one of the commission pieces that you've done, and you do quite a few of these for your clients, is the Fire Sun. And I think that's a, an amazing piece with dynamic oranges and reds and yellows in there. It's just beautiful. The people that had commissioned me for that had spent a lot of time in Arizona. And I think a lot of my orange images and red images do bring in the Southwest feel to them. That being said, that is usually who will purchase my work because it will fit into their home. It's something that they love. Of course. And there's another one, I think the same client bought it, Where the Green Grass Grows, and it's a very similar colour scheme that you've got before. Well, I reckon those two pieces would have looked great with each other. I think that's fabulous. I'm glad you saw that because uh, uh, that was my intention. Okay, we're going to continue with a few new techniques and I want you to watch these very carefully because these are amazing. It's going to bring all of this in together. It's going to let the colors flow so evenly and then we're going to disperse them in a very, very small way. So we're going to take the alcohol ink and normally a brush, but your brushes will take a beating. So most of the time I suggest you don't spend a lot of money on alcohol ink brushes. And the alcohol basically disperses the ink on that behalf. Yes, well there's already alcohol in the ink. So we're just adding what they call a solution. Uh -huh. So if you were to buy it online, they would call it a blending solution. Okay. Yeah, you've got another piece that I think that you've done the same technique with called Purple Haze. And you can actually see how that, that ink bleeds its way through the paint and se separates it a great deal. But this alcohol, as we go along, it will blend, it will leak those two colors out together and you will have a beautiful, beautiful line going down. It just takes time to look at it, enjoy it, and have fun with it. And you've got a piece called Spilling Ink, and that's almost three-dimensional. It looks like dried leaves sort of hovering over a red sun. That's that crimson red. It's a beautiful color. Now, some of the people that have influenced you when you first started were uh, Leslie Franklin, who you actually saw online, but she was doing these similar techniques to you now. But uh, you looked at that work and said, my goodness, that's something that I want to create as well. Yes, she's taken animals, something like uh, what you did, Graham, but with alcohol inks completely, where she's actually done tigers and lions. And, and this, it just intrigued me that she's able to actually draw so beautifully with them that I really hope I'm able to, to reach out to her. I called her my mentor one day and she immediately got back to me and she says, I didn't know I was ever going to be anybody's mentor. But, <laughs> so we never know in this world, do we? No, but you, uh, you've done her proud, I can assure you. And you've also got a piece called Purple Rain. I don't think it has much to do with prints, but uh, it's one of those pieces that you put together and all of a sudden out of the mist come a, an embracing couple floating in the clouds. It's uh, extraordinary. It's actually purple, purple Rain number one, just so that there's a difference between misunderstanding that I was trying to do prints and 
And another piece that I'd like to bring up is the Tears of Joy, Peggy, and that's a wonderfully bright, vivacious abstract without any doubts. Now that we've uh, worked today on a few pieces and we found out that the weather has a great effect on art of any kind, um, you can't quit, you have to keep going. If you don't like the first one, let's start over. I think this is a beautiful, it, the image is still dripping a little bit, but because it's warm out, it's gonna dry. So you'll have a few tears of joy right there. Mm, it looks, looks great, it really yeah. does. T today this is our final uh, experimentation and it just shows you the different vibrant colors you can get with alcohol ink. I want you to try them. If you need, would you like help, you have my website. Um, I love to talk to you. I love to share what I know and if I can help you enjoy art, I'm here for you. Thank you, Graham. Thank you very much, Peggy. And thank you so much for having us here today, Peggy. It was just a pleasure and your work is so interesting and so vibrant. It's, it's been just a great day. Thank you. It was fun doing it. Okay, Peggy, fantastic day. Thank you so much for having us in the studio. That was fun having you. Yeah, it was a really, really interesting I technique. didn't know that we did that. <laughs> <laughs> it was wonderful. And also, some of your other amazing work behind us as well. Yes. You're quite a talented lady. Thank you. Very creative. And also, on uh, as far as the alcohol inks are concerned, this is about, well, you can probably get them bigger, but if you look at this, this is on the, the UPO paper, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, and it's sort of like a, a plastic paper, but you can see the actual ink as it's formed. It's really quite quite amazing how it comes about. So um, This is five feet by two feet. Okay. And um, again, it's a matter of having yeah. this space to let it flow, let it do its thing. Mm. I think this is would look fantastic above a contemporary sofa. It's great. So it's amazing. That was kind of my inspiration. So if anybody wants to see um, what you do, even talk to you about workshops or coming to, to, do, um, to do your work with you, well, what's your website address again? PeggyStokesGallery.com Fantastic, and come in and see her there. Also, this is a pretty auspicious day. It's a day that America will remember, and the rest of the world, basically. We're actually filming Peggy on 9-11 in the United States, so there's obviously a a lot of news once again on uh, on what happened those many years ago, but uh, very, very poignant day and a day that you and I, and I know that probably the planet will remember. And, and it's the stupidity of what man does to each other. Right. It's extraordinary and, and we don't have to be that way. We shouldn't be that way. I know that in many senses that we are, but we have to learn to live with each other and be kind and respect and love each other as much as we can. And that's what you do. You pass it on to people as much as you possibly can. So I think that um, I think the old saying: uh, "You treat other people like you want to be treated." Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, it's so easy to, to just smile. Yeah, absolutely. So. A smile can make you feel really good. Absolutely. Especially yeah. look at look at that smile. Yeah, <laughs> we do our best. Uh, <laughs> and if you want to come and see us as well at uh, coloringlife.com.au, uh, we're most happy to talk to people about what we do and where we go and come and see us on YouTube and subscribe to what we're doing. But it's been a fantastic trip. You are a darling person. Well, it's been, it's been a wonderful day, it really has. Had a good time. And as we always say, before we go, remember, make sure you put some colour in your life. And thank you so much, guys. Bye now. Bye. <laughs>